and welcome back to my channel. I have had a few questions lately about my equipment um, that I use to film my videos. So I thought rather than answer everyone individually, I would just compile everything into a video. So then that way, when you guys ask, what is your filming setup or what equipment do you use for filming? I can send you directly to this video. So basically today, I'm just gonna take you through my camera cameras, cameras that I use, what I use for taking like still shots versus videoing versus vlogging, what lighting I use, any other little knickknacks that I use, and also what I recommend investing in if you are planning on starting a YouTube and are starting from scratch. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, just keep on watching. Before we get started, I just want to mention, please disregard my background. I'm not set up for a tutorial or anything. I'm literally just showing you my equipment. So please disregard all of this. If you guys are interested in how I create my backdrops, there is a video, I will link it up here. You can go and watch that if you're interested in creating your own DIY cheap backdrop. But I am now going to take you through all the equipment that I use. Okay, so first up, I am going to start with the lighting I use. So this is the ring light I use. I purchased this off eBay quite a while ago. It's just a basic ring light. It is quite large if you can compare it to my hand as a rough guideline to how big it is. I will try and find the exact link um, and link it down below if I can. But basically, it's just a standard ring light. Um, that I got off eBay. There are hundreds of them on eBay if you just go and search ring light. I'm sure you will find something very, very similar, if not exactly the same as this. I think I paid about $100 for this. It could have been just over $100, but as I said, that was quite a while ago, so you probably could pick them up even cheaper now. Usually, this would have a little attachment here that you can use to attach your camera or a mirror or something to it. But I dropped this the other day and that part snapped off. But thankfully the light itself still works perfectly. So I will show you guys the function of this light. So when you turn it on, there's just a little switch at the back and you just turn that, you can adjust the brightness. So that's the brightest that it goes. And that's usually the setting I use it on the brightest, but you can dim it down as low as you like until it's all the way off. Um, it's then also got another little knob on the back that allows you to adjust the warmth. So if you wanted it to be like a golden hour, you would go the warmer setting, but I usually use it on like the white bright setting, but it would just depend on what you're taking photos of and what effect you are going for. But that is my ring light. That's the only lighting I use. A mixture of this and natural lighting is perfect. Um, but if you wanted more light, you could obviously use multiple ring lights. I actually wouldn't mind getting another one, but I don't really have the space for it right now. So I've been putting it off, but this does the job. I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, I could not speak more highly of this ring light. Next up, I have this tripod. It's just honestly a standard universal tripod. I don't even think it has a brand name. My mum actually gave me this. It used to be hers, but she wasn't using it. So she gave it to me. Um, I honestly don't even think it has a brand name. It's probably just off eBay as well, but it's super handy because you obviously just attach your camera to the top there. This part moves so you can change the angle. Um, if I can loosen this up a bit. So this part moves so you can change the angle that you want to film on. This also allows you to change the angle that way. And then obviously the legs retract and extend depending on what height you want. And then it's got this little, it's hard to do with one hand, but little winder that allows you to adjust the height of that top section there. So yeah, as I said, guys, I have no idea where this is from exactly. It doesn't have a brand name. It's probably just off eBay, but it does the trick for me. I absolutely love this tripod. So easy to use. It's pretty sturdy as well, which is nice. And it comes with a little 
zip up bag for when you want to pack it away. Next up, I have a new toy, which is this tripod head attachment. I think it's called like a flex, flex tripod attachment or something like that. You can get these off eBay. I have seen them. I didn't get this one off eBay. I got this off a website, but um, you can definitely get these off eBay because I have seen them. But basically, it's just a tripod attachment. So this part attaches to the tripod and then your camera attaches to the top here and you can move it around on like a bunch of different angles. I think this will be really good for filming tutorials because it allows you to do like an overhead shot. I'm going to attach it to my tripod right now and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So here it is attached to my tripod. Never mind the strap. <laughs> um, so basically it just attaches to the top here and then this folds in like that if you just wanted to have your camera straight and then you can fold it out to whatever angle you like so it is a bit loose at the moment it needs to be tightened so it comes with a little tool so you can tighten up the hinges to be, make it a bit stronger but I think this is going to be really good for filming tutorials because it just gives you a little bit extra length that way so you're not going to get your tripod legs in your tutorial, if that makes sense. So the next thing I wanted to mention is my GoPro. This is the GoPro Hero 5, Hero Black 5, I don't know. It's not the newest model. I've had this for many, many years. I did have another one before this, but it currently resides at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. So that is a story for another day, but I then, with travel insurance and everything was able to get it replaced and this is what I replaced it with. I haven't used it in a really long time. I've barely used this one at all. This is kind of the camera I use when I go traveling. Um, when I want to be able to take some cool shots like underwater and stuff, I will take my GoPro. But because I haven't been doing any traveling um, recently, I have not used it at all and I haven't used it in a really long time. But I decided recently that I do want to start using it a bit more. So like this camera is such great quality. It's so small. It's so discreet. You can put it in your pocket. You can take it anywhere. You don't have to have it attached to this selfie stick like I do. I just find it easier for stability and things to have it attached. But I really actually love the GoPro. I think it's such a great product. It's such great quality. It's going to be great for vlogging and I'm kind of spewing that I haven't used it for vlogging sooner because it is just so convenient and lightweight. So I plan on using this a lot more so stay tuned for my next vlog I will probably use this so we'll see how it goes. And on the topic of the GoPro I just wanted to mention selfie stick because it just makes it so much easier to control. You can control the length of it this selfie stick is literally just off eBay. This one is specifically for the GoPro, so you can't actually attach a normal camera to it. I actually have another one coming in the mail that is a selfie stick slash mini tripod for my normal camera. So I'm looking forward to that coming because, again, just stability. Like, it's so much easier holding your camera with a stick than it is just holding the camera by itself because... I don't know, your hand's never 100% stable and I just find the stick really helps with stability. So um, yeah, if you plan on doing vlogging, I definitely recommend a stick or if you're going to be doing any kind of filming that involves moving around, um, I definitely recommend a selfie stick or a stabilizer of some sort. So the next thing I wanted to mention is my phone and the reason I'm mentioning my phone is because this is what I use for all my vlogging. So all my vlogs that you can see on my channel, they have all been filmed on my phone. And that is purely because I like to be discreet when I'm filming in public. I don't like to openly film in public. I find it really awkward. So I like to use my phone when filming in public because it is discreet and people don't know that you're filming. Unless you are literally standing there like this, they're not going to know you're filming. And I'm going to show you guys a little trick right now as to how you can film in public without people knowing. And I don't mean this to be 
creepy. Like I don't mean this in a creepy way, but it's just so it's not awkward and you're not awkwardly filming things or like having someone follow you. It's just, I don't know, I, I feel much more comfortable when I'm filming when people don't know I'm filming. But anyway, I'm gonna show you guys how I do it without being noticed. Okay, so to film a video on your phone in public without making it obvious, all you're going to need is your phone and your wallet. Weird combo, I know, but hear me out. So what you do, you go into your phone, you're gonna go into the camera, you're gonna to go to video, obviously, because that's what you wanna do, you want a video, and you are going to press the record button. So we're now recording. You then place your phone with your wallet like this. Be careful that you don't press the like stop recording button because obviously then you're not gonna have any content, but you then just take your phone, place it with your wallet like this, and you just walk around. So I will literally just be in a shop, say I'm yarn shopping, and I'll just be holding my phone like this. And no one would even know the difference. They just think you're holding your wallet and your phone. Genius! Um, so for those of you who are always asking me, how do you film in public? Like I, I want to, but I'm too embarrassed. I, I don't want people to know that I'm filming. Neither do I. I'm embarrassed to film in public. I would never openly film in public unless maybe one day it's my full-time job and that's how I get paid. I wouldn't probably care so much. But at the moment, I like to be discreet when filming in public. So that's how I do it. I just hold my phone and my wallet together and I walk around like that. That's literally all there is to it. All right, last but definitely not least, we have my DSLR camera. This is the Canon EOS M50. I absolutely love it. This is the lens that came with the camera. I haven't added anything extra to it. This is the camera I use when I'm filming anything at home, basically. So I said to you guys before that I use my phone to film vlogs and I'm gonna start using my GoPro more. This is the camera I use whenever I'm filming tutorials, taking stills or doing anything at home where I don't have to be moving around a lot or I don't have to leave the house. So basically, this is just a DSLR camera. It's got the screen here. It can fold in and out. It also can spin so you can do like selfie mode. Um, it is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. I was so lucky to be gifted this for Christmas last year and I absolutely love it. In saying that, you do not have to spend a lot of money getting a camera if you're just starting out. I started by just filming on my iPhone and I didn't even have a tripod. I didn't have any lighting. I had absolutely nothing. All I had was my phone and that's how I started. So if that's all you have and you're watching this video and you're thinking, oh, but I don't have a ring light. I don't have a camera. I don't have a GoPro. I don't have a selfie stick. I don't have any of those things. That's okay, you don't need it. You can literally just start with your phone. That's how I started. And I still to this day use my phone to film things, like I said to you guys. But don't let not having any equipment put you off doing something that you really wanna do because you can just start purely with nothing more than a phone. So please don't watch this video and think, oh, but I don't have any of this equipment. I can't start a YouTube channel, but I really, really want to, or I can't film any tutorials, but I really, really want to. You don't need it. All you need is an iPhone or a, you know, a phone with a good quality camera. That's all you need. Honestly, that is all you need. The only downfall to the iPhone, um, and I can only speak on behalf of the iPhone because that's all I know, that's all I've ever had, and that's all I've, like, the only phone I've ever filmed on. The only downfall is the microphone. And I say this because I've recently discovered how crap, with lack of a better term, the microphone on the iPhone is. And I've only noticed that because I've started using a proper camera. So I wouldn't say the iPhone camera quality is necessarily 
worse or better than a DSLR camera but the microphone in this camera specifically is so much better than the iPhone microphone because uh, when I'm editing my videos I can tell just when I'm editing the sound quality um, when I film on my DSLR camera my Canon M or my Canon EOS M50 um, is so much better than when I film on my iPhone. So that is the only downfall I could say um, in regards to that. But honestly, guys, if you want to start a channel, just do it. You just have to start somewhere. Once you've made a few videos or, you know, it's a little bit down the track and you think, I'm really enjoying this. I want to invest some money into it. By all means, go out and buy a camera. But don't think, I can't start up a YouTube channel because I don't have a camera. Like... You can. You can literally start with nothing more than a phone with a camera. So, yeah, I'm puffed. In my opinion, if you were going to invest in something to increase the quality of your videos or your photos, my first thing would definitely 100% hands down be lighting. And that is purely because no matter how good your camera is, no matter how good the camera quality on your phone is, if you've got crap lighting, your photos and your videos are not going to look good. So that is hands down my biggest tip. If you do want to invest in something, invest in lighting. It also gives you a lot more flexibility on when you can film. So before I had my ring light, I could only ever film during the day. I could never film anything at night and that was because there just wasn't adequate lighting to produce good quality content. But now that I have my ring light, I can film anytime I like and even on like dark and gloomy days like it is today, it's not super bright outside, I could film today if I wanted to. Like I could film, I could take photos if I wanted to because I have my ring light. It just gives you more options and more flexibility with filming videos and taking photos. So hands down, 100%, I would recommend investing in lighting. And I would recommend investing in lighting before you invest in a camera. You have to have good lighting to have good content. If no one can see your content, it might be amazing, but if they can't see it, what's the point, you know? So anyway, lighting makes everything better. 100% definitely recommend investing in lighting if you do want to invest in anything at all. Otherwise, natural lighting is amazing. Like I'm sitting in natural light right now. I've not got my ring light on. Um, I'm just out in my dining room um, in front of the window and yeah. So natural lighting is amazing, but if you do want more flexibility or if you just want to add a little bit of an edge, I suppose, to your content, 100%, I recommend investing in some sort of lighting. Well, guys, that wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you did like it, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please go subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all my future videos. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.